everywhere I look, it is gay black men. We back. Now, listen, I got a treat for y'all today, brothers. I got a treat for y'all today. Now, today we got two married women, two married black women. Both are married to black men. You got one black woman. She's married to a pastor. She used to be a dating coach, a matchmaker. You got another, you got another black woman. She's married to, I believe she's married to a West African man, if I'm not mistaken, right? So you got one, Rebecca Lynn Pope. That's the one that's married to the pastor. She's married to a black man. And then you got Shay Charday. She's married to an African man. Both of these women are married to a black man, right? But you got Rebecca Lynn Pope, right? This matchmaker chick on, on YouTube. She put out a video the other day, right? Basically telling telling black women what did i tell y'all in my video the other day my video entitled conversation with the divester i told y'all black women what have black women been saying to each other since the plantation since the tobacco plantation the sugar cane plantation what have they been saying to each other girl you better get your white man girl you better get your european planter girl you better get your european colonist rebecca lynn pope even though she's married to a black man even though she's married to a black pastor I don't know if she's doing it for clout. I don't know if she's doing it for clicks and views for the YouTube ad money. But she hopped on YouTube and she said the same thing that black women been saying for girl, you better get your white man. Now, listen, Shay Charday put out a video in response to everything she said, bro, I'm going to sit back and I might come back on my commentary later. But just sit back and enjoy this excellent debate, bro. This excellent debate. You got two black women married to black men. One is telling black women, girl, you better get your white man. And you got the other one basically debunking and destroying her entire premise, her entire argument to the smallest molecule. I'm not going to waste no time. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Man, salute to Shay Charday. And like I said before, you know how I said women do not call each other out. Once again, I got to eat my words. Once again, I got to eat my words because Shay Charday, she called it out, man. So I got to stop saying that. I got to stop saying that women do not call each other out because Shay Charday keeps proving me wrong time and time again. Now, not wasting no time. Let's get into it. Black women who want to exclusively marry black men. We are in the middle of a crisis. Black men are in crisis. And anybody who denies that black men are in crisis is ignoring the data, the science, the research, the statistics. The, pr the, the problem that I have with this conversation of, just of, of black men being in crisis is that that assumes that black women aren't. They're born in the same household, coming up under the same parents, under the same single mothers, under the same whatever. So it's like, to me, there's no situation in a, com in a community where it's like, one side of the community is doing okay and then the other side isn't like you like it is a world of that you, you can't just have all the women just killing it and then they're just doing great but then the men are doing horrible and it doesn't impact each other and this is where to me they start trying to separate genders in ways that are like not really feasible because like i said men and women are growing up in the same household so if black men are black men are struggling black women are struggling too there's really no way around it. Now we can do tit for tat and say, oh, well, we have more degrees here, but then it's like, well, you got less degrees there. We can really play tit for tat, but the reality is men and women, the way they work and operate together, if one is doing bad, then that's going to impact the other. So that's why I, I, this, this whole premise of black men are doing bad, it always scratches my head because it's just like, so you can really say that and at the same time assume that you're doing okay as black women and you're not being impacted. Like that's not the way this works. It is real. By the time, and I, like I said, I'm going to take my time with this. By the time you take that black people are only 11% of the population, black men being half of that 11%, by the time you remove the gay men, a good third to half the black men I see in the gym are gay. Everywhere I look, it is gay black men. So let's start with the black men are gay. This is something that I've heard time and time and time and time again. There's too many gay black men, there's too many down low black men. So that just removes them from the population. Again, what is missing from that conversation is okay, well, what percentage of Black women are gay or queer or bisexual? So you mean to tell me that 
every single black woman is heterosexual, but only black men are gay. Y'all see what I'm saying? Back in 2019, and trust me, guys, there are many sources. This is just one of many sources. This one says 23% of young black women now identify as bisexual. So if you want to talk about queerness, LGBTQ, um, what is it, same gender loving, black women are not excluded from that. If anything, they're arguably embracing the lifestyle more so than black men. The mass incarceration that when you see the populations of these prisons, and it is predominantly black men that are, these prisons are full of black men, full at an exponential rate compared to our percentage of society. We're only 11% of the population, but the prisons are full of black men. So this is one section of the article here. It says, for example, the U.S. Department of Justice reports that the rate of incarceration for black women is 113 for 100,000 more than twice that of white females. The data is even more troublesome for young black women in their late teens and early adulthood as they are five times more likely to be incarcerated than their white counterparts. So if you wanna talk about there being a high, exponentially higher rate of black men in prison with respect to other populations, the same can be said for black women. You still now, under heterosexual black men who are not married and who are not gay and who are not in prison, are still gonna be your gold tooth, pants sagging dudes who have zero sense. That's still inside of that number. She talked about pants sagging, talked about what was gold teeth, whatever, whatever she used to try to try to create this pookie persona. You mean to tell me for a pookie? There isn't this. There's a lack of awareness around what is eligible and the availability of black men. My husband thinks so many men are just like him, that there's just really a bunch of carry popes running around that are solid, hardworking, intelligent, marriage material, mature, grown men who want to be responsible and want to build a family. And I'm like, Carrie Pope, <laughs> no. So if you're not even raised to value marriage or to see that as something worth pursuing, then I don't think that you can even assume that the majority of women are, are marriage material. They're probably not. They've been hurt by two black women in their life, and now they're writing off all black women. Black women do the same thing. As And black women don't do that. What? <laughs> As if a white woman or a Latino woman, somebody who don't want you, by the way, or going to deal with your shenanigans and craziness because they got even higher standards. So if what she's saying is true, that there's other cultures who actually raise women to be, raise men to be husbands and women to be wives, she's, and she's also suggesting that in Black culture, we don't raise men to be husbands. And it's like, so you mean to tell me we don't raise men to be husbands, but we raise women to be wives? That's what I'm saying. The math doesn't math to me. I've never been more happy. I'm in such a great place so much peace and balance and Carrie pays 95% of the bills. I've never been in a place where I did not have the financial pressure. I am provided for and taken care of. I still work, but I'm not under the pressure I was previously. And I said, Dr. Pam, that's my therapist. Dr. Pam, is this how white women feel? God. Um, <laughs> this is a classic case of the myth of white womanhood. That is a classic case of the myth of white womanhood. As I mentioned before, 70% of mothers today work. Um, this is of all races all across the board. 80% um, of households live paycheck to paycheck. This is of all races all across the board. Um, yes, you have a probably higher percentage of white families that have wealth largely because of the history of this nation. But there's also a very huge amount of white families that struggle. White families actually 
take up more welfare than black families and of that nature because they also have economic challenges and problems. And so the myth of white hom- womanhood is also one, kind of one of those been ideas that have been floating around for a long time, especially in the black sector, where we have our own issues, we have our own self-hatred that we struggle with, and then we just imagine, what would it be like to be white? I have white, plenty of white friends right now who would look at that and gag and be like, are you kidding me? And I began to think, and my therapist said to me, she says, Rebecca, you are experiencing something that very few black women will ever experience. You are experiencing something that very few women will experience, period. Marriage is on the decline. As I mentioned before, about 80% of families live paycheck to paycheck. What she described is the life of an upper middle class or upper class woman. And good for her. I'm not, this is no shade. I'm glad that she's in that financial position. But we can't make this about like some race thing. And I don't know. And again, she's experiencing this lifestyle with a black man. Which is why I'm just like, why are you experiencing this with a black man? The people who, by the way, are the most likely to actually date and marry you. But then now you're going and telling women to go expand their options to a group of men who are less likely to marry them. That's why I don't understand. I don't understand this. It, 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 the logic is not there. <laughs> this is what I said the other night in class. Please pray and open your heart to ask God to help you go beyond dating black men. Okay, so the problem I have with this advice is that we grow up in a nation where the images of Jesus are overwhelmingly white. So if you're talking to a group of Christian women who grew up in Christian churches and Christian circles, they're probably psychologically completely open to the idea of marrying a white man just for the simple fact that they go to church and see white images all the time. And I said this as a, I'm a Christ follower myself. So it's like, look, I'm, I'm all about the faith, but I'm like, I also recognize that there's been a, a history of white supremacy and racism that has infiltrated certain churches. I mean, look, you have slavery is literally happening in certain churches. Um, so I, I understand that that also exists. And in some instances, there has been times where there's been a little bit of self-hatred that women have contended with or actually just embraced. So it is very, 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 very incredibly common for Christian women in particular to be open, if not preferential, prefer white men, largely because of, I think, the images we see growing up and this other things that are going on. So so I'm just like, I don't think that's necessarily anything you need to pray about. A lot of these women already prefer, already want white guys based upon the evidence. I shared this Y'all see in the community tab, I have sources, the, the dating divide, we're talking about how all races of women, Black, Latina, Asian, responded first and had a preference, preferred, wanted, had a higher priority over white men than any other group. All of them wanted white men more than the own race of men. This was every race of women. So you don't need to pray about something that women already want. You have to open up your options. My question, okay, so where are we open up? This is always the thing. Where are we opening up options to? Because options, again, have been open since the beginning of this nation. White men have always had access to Black women, period. They have always had sexual access to Black women. The issue becomes not the lack of access. It is truthfully the lack of desire. I don't know how else to say this other than just saying it. It's a lot of white guys are not interested. Of course, that there are always those exceptions. We can all speak of exceptions. And sometimes women love to live in the exceptions. I get it. But I'm just saying the premise of opening up your options is that's not the issue. Options have already been open. White men have already had access. They're the ones that created the anti-miscegenation laws. If white men were truly interested in getting with black women, they wouldn't have had those laws to begin with. So that exists. The problem is, where is the lack of desire? That's the problem. The problem is that race is still a big deal in this nation. And I just had lunch with my new friend, Iyaba, Iyabo, Dr. Iyabo. And she said, black men are black men. She's from Africa. And she said, she's, she's married to a white man now. And she said, Mm-mm. It it ain't no different with the African men. It's still the BS. We have a cultural issue, guys. Cultural issue. 
that's hell of offensive. I don't know who, but I'm like, now you're making this a genetic, some, she said it's a cultural issue, but now, so not only have you implicated an entire group of men in the U.S., now you got the whole continent of Africa implicated? That's some bull. <laughs> like, that's some bull. Are you kidding me? Like, some of some of the most humble, God-fearing, um, caring men that I know are African men. So I don't know where she, who she talked to, where she came from. I know colonialism is also a thing in Africa. And yes, I, I have heard different men and women complain and talk about how that's something that African women struggle with too, the white savior complex. But I'm like, don't sit up here and now implicate an entire continent of men saying, oh, black men are black men everywhere. It's just like, what? How is that any different than what was said earlier about literally black men going online and saying all these things about black women and writing them all off because of their bad experiences. How is what she just did any different? She literally implicated an entire continent, an entire race of men in this BS, acting like it wouldn't also apply to the same women of that same ethnic group. Like that's, That is some bull. That's some bunk, y'all. I, I don't agree with that at all. Like I said, some of the most God-fearing, humble, lovely men I know are African men. So you're coming against black men in America and you're coming against black men from the continent. Like what? what? And then white men are the answer. Like, what are we even talking about? And this is what I said. This is what I said, you know, a few days ago. It's like, look, if white men were so perfect and amazing and then have no issues with a woman, why did white women start feminism then? Why did they go and literally try to overturn a system with feminism? White women started it. White women championed it. They're the ones who funded it. White women. If things were so great in their family, in their relationship, why did white women start feminism? This is why these whole arguments to me, they really, really start to break down. And I said before, if somebody wants to date and marry out, that's fine. Like if you fall in love with somebody of a different race, to me, that's a lot different then you sitting around here and doing everything that's just been done up to this point, creating all these lies, making all these excuses to justify you being with a white person. If you want to be with a white man, just be with a white man. That's fine. But like, you ain't got to come up with, promote these like 1980s lies. And then now, now you're talking about like genetically, she's like, oh, culturally it's a problem. Well, you're from the same culture. So you're also implicated in that. All of us are. Ain't no way around it. That's absolutely white supremacy. Is anti white supremacy? Yeah, she was. She went up straight up to the continent. I bet you she ain't never even been talking about. Oh, what's the culture part? How you even know? How you even know? You got black women right now going over to the continent trying to find husbands. I know one personally. So I don't. Mm, I don't know what you're talking about. That's 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 some bull to me. That's crazy. Listen. The only women I know who are really like pro pro black like that usually are women who have already swirled and had failed sword relationships or maybe they already have black sons but like we don't black american culture does not create does not raise a, a, a group of revolutionary pro-black women who are so race loyal that's not the mindset that is not the 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 ethos that is not the cultural narrative that has been passed down the cultural narrative that's been passed down over the last couple of decades for black women has been expand your options. So it's like she's, to me, she's talking to a group of women who don't really exist. She's assuming that like all these black women out here are just like holding it down and are just like turning away all these like rich white billionaires to hold on to that like real black love. Like she's assuming that these women are so revolutionary and they have just all these proposals. They've had white men propose. They've had Asian men propose. They've had Arab billionaires propose, but they're saying no. I'm not taking any of these eligible non-white men because I'm holding on to my black African prince. Like, this is what she's assuming is happening. But we know this ain't true. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not the kind of women that America produces, not the kind of black women at least. This is a melting pot. We've heard me expanding your options since freaking Lena Horde, <laughs> right? She was expanding her options back then, fighting for black rights. Okay, so that's why I'm like, I don't even know who she's talking to, truthfully, because black women already know this. This is, and even for those who are, who do, who do prefer black men, they at least support 
the idea and celebrate and sometimes even fantasize about the idea of dating out. So I'm like, this is not, this isn't like a new revelation. Black women have been trying to do this forever. The problem is they just can't get the support. And at the end of the day, where are black men at? Where are they doing the work to make themselves? The black men are grabbing their passports because of this rhetoric. That's where they're at. Last, last, black men who hear this are like, yeah, yeah I, okay, I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to do it. You talking about Africa? Africa got a cultural problem. We got a cultural problem. Okay, I'm going to go. All right, bye. That's that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And then we can't literally be open about our negative preconceived notions about black men and then at the same time be mad when they don't open up to us emotionally like at that point that's you're not creating a safe environment for them you need generational healing work. she knows this she's a grown what like she knows this so i'm just like what is going on is this just pandering like i that's why i'm like you know i I want to, I like, I want to believe she's ignorant. Like I want to give her the benefit of the doubt and believe she's ignorant, but I'm like, this is an older seasoned woman that's been married. She knows how, she knows what these women are about. She's the one that did that video a couple of years ago. So where's all this? How was it a couple of years ago? These women are, are hard to deal with unrealistic expectations. Don't want to lose weight. Don't want to get themselves in the place to get the kind of men that they want. And then fast forward, this expand your options. How, what? Also, for all this whole black men aren't marriage material, there's more black men married than black women. There's literally more black men married to black women. So we're talking all this stuff and judging all these men for not being marriage minded. But meanwhile, they're the ones who are going down the aisle more. So make that make sense. Time and time again. And my thing is, look, at the end of the day, if you want to make date a white man, just date a white man. You don't need to come up with all of these excuses. You don't need to come up with all of these different lies. You don't need to go and try to judge people. You don't need to go and create all these narratives. Just say that you like a white man. Just say you like Zaddy, okay? Just say it. But like all these excuses as to why, 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 why you have to date out, it's like, it's just bunk. And it doesn't really get to the core issue because if you're trying to, again, escape Blackistan, okay, and escape the trauma, from the, the quote unquote ninjas and dusties, but you're not dealing with why you attracted ninjas and dusties, then, then you're not, you're probably not gonna have success outside of the community. As I said before, if you can't learn how to get along with men inside of your community, how do you think you're gonna be able to go outside of your community and get along well with men? And if you're coming with a whole bunch of different baggage, and if your narrative is black men ain't H-E double hockey sticks, and I've had all these traumatizing relationships with black men. How is that going to be appealing with to other races of men if they know you have all that baggage with your own men, by the way? So the best way for you to rule this world, it's certainly not to be self-hating and it's certainly not to have all this baggage and garbage. It's like if you are a beautiful woman with a beautiful spirit, then this wouldn't be an issue. And that's what I'm like, I wish we would just focus on that. I wish we would actually focus on, okay. Are black women marriageable? We've already heard black men aren't marriageable. Okay, well, are black women? We've talked about that. We've talked about the weight issue. We've talked about the single parent household, which it don't matter what race of men you are. You got kids out of wedlock. You have kids that you're bringing to the scenario. A lot of men aren't interested. It don't matter what the race is. So that alone, like I said, between the rate, the, the weight, between the kids scenarios, in some instances, debt from school, that alone. That alone makes it harder for women to find the kind of men that they want. Then you want to talk about if there's any attitude involved. Then you want to talk about if there's any misandry, any male hatred, any baggage. Uh, that's a whole other component. But I'm like, if you just focus on just being a, a good, beautiful woman, then none of this stuff should be an issue. And I'm like, especially because I know she she's talking to women who proposed to be you know woman of God. She's a Christian woman talking to other Christian women. I'm like, as a fellow Christian woman, this stuff is bunk. You cannot say that you love God and hate the men who look like you. You cannot, you can't say that. And what this kind of rhetoric is doing is showing hatred. Now, I know we wouldn't 
we wouldn't claim it. We'd say, oh, well, no, it's th this is this is the facts. This is just the truth. But then we fail to actually provide receipts that show this, this is proof. And what it does is further drive a wedge and it further reinforces negative stereotypes that actually have the good black men going to grab the passport and go abroad. That's what it does. So first of all, you cannot be a woman of God and hate the men who look like you. That's just buck. The word, the word of God itself says, if you hate the person you can see, you cannot say that you love God who you can't see. So that alone is bunk. You can't be divesting and, and be a Christian. That's just, that's anti-biblical, period. Secondly, if you really are a woman of God, truthfully, if you if you allow God to take you through the process of purification, search my heart, right? A prayer will see in Psalms or search me and know me, try me and know my thoughts. If you allow God to show you yourself, show you if there's areas in yourself where you're not marriageable, if maybe you are hard to deal with, if maybe you have a bad attitude, if maybe you're attracted to trauma, if you allow God to take you through your own purification process and you become that beautiful wife, then you're going to have an you're going to have an easier time attracting what you want. Like attracts like. And as I mentioned before, in a society where 304s and thought culture is being promoted, you will stand out. You will absolutely stand out if you are that virtuous woman. The problem is a lot of us don't want to go through the process of actually trying to become a virtuous woman. And instead of focusing on that, it's easier to just point the fingers and say, it's all these dusties. It's all these men that ain't got no common sense. And all these men that are laid up there with the Becky or they're gay or whatever. It's so easy to find what men are not doing right but it is not easy to look in the mirror and say well god where am i doing wrong but that's where the work starts that's where the work starts and if you're not willing to do that the no amount of trying to divest or swirl or marry out or find brad is going to fix it. it ain't you have to allow god to take you through the process this is why i was talking to somebody the other day i was like i don't probably ever i don't even know at least today at least today, I wouldn't do a matchmaking service because 95% of women wouldn't pass, just based upon the spirituality alone, we wouldn't get past step one. I'm like, we got to lay a spiritual foundation. Are you willing to give your life to God fully? And now go through the purification process of what that actually means. Are you willing to deal with, deal with your attitudes, your selfishness, the humility? Are you willing to submit to the authority in your life, whether it be a pastor at that particular time, and then when you get married to your husband, and then continue to go through that submission process. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to recognize that there's going to be things that you don't want that you don't get? This is not about you getting all your goodies. You don't pray a prayer, and then God just gives you a Chanel bag and a, a, a big old mansion and a car because God, it's not like that. God may send you a dude that's, that's don't have all the money in the bank, but he has a good heart and good character, and he works hard. God may send you a dude that's five six, and you want to you want to do that six five. Are you willing for that? There has to be humility involved. So it's like, are we even willing to go through the process? As I mentioned before, if we focus on being virtuous women, which is what women of God should I think believe should be doing, right? Those who are opposed to follow Christ. If we focus on being that, then we wouldn't have to sit around and get caught up in all this BS nonsense that's been debunked like five times over. Since the 1980s, we wouldn't get caught up in this BS. We would be focusing on what God is trying to do in our life, and then we would start to actually attract men who are like-minded. But don't make this a race thing. It ain't got nothing to do with race. Like attracts like. She went over there and implicated the whole continent of Africa and all the men in, in the U.S. It's just like, that's just crazy. And then we, and then we enter, enter the myth of the white womanhood. The tragic mulatto syndrome, we kind of got some of that. Like it's just, it was a whole bunch of nonsense that I would not expect from a woman like her. This is why I was very surprised and disturbed. But anyways. Now listen, I don't got too much to say. Shay Day, she broke it down in ways that I don't even gotta say nothing, man. I don't even gotta say nothing, bro. I don't gotta say nothing, man. But it's crazy, bro. Both of these women are married to black men right you got that rebecca lynn pope lady she's married to a black pastor right both of these women are christian women christian god-fearing women they love jesus right but you got rebecca lynn pope i don't know if it's like are they being funded by the government because you got you, you're married to a black pastor right you're married to a good black man who says he pays your bills he takes care of you take everything everything is lovely but then she hops on the internet and says that black men have genetic defects that trace back to the continent of Africa and that's why European men are the savior. Keep in mind she sleep next to a black man every single night. And I love how Shay Day broke everything down so beautifully, right? 
if the black man is homosexual you saying black women is not homosexual bro black women they all need deep i'm not saying black women outside the united states we're talking about black women in the west black women in the west they out here they out here engaging in homosexuality they having sex with transsexuals they having sex with each other they kissing each other they touching each other black women they going to jail too like i said they out here shoplifting they out here shooting they out here selling drugs they out here prostituting they out here selling pussy so they out here going to jail too and it goes back to what i said in my dr umar video all of these arguments that you wage against black men, they only make sense if in your mind you assume that black women are perfect, right? Like when Dr. Umar was talking about the Pookie and Ray Ray, the street dudes, his arguments only make sense if you assume that there's not street women. There's not black women who are their counterparts, right? Every black man has his counterpart. Just like she was talking about the, the, the pants sagging, gold tooth, black man that's in and out of jail sagging his pants, guess what? that black man has his counterpart as well that there's a gold tooth street chick with the felonies on a record too so like i said these arguments only make sense because in their mind black women are perfect creatures with no flaws but guess what every black man has his counterpart every single black man has his counterpart and going back to what she said about how it goes back to the continent of africa right there's there's a cultural problem on the continent of africa that was the craziest thing to say because what what she is saying is she's saying as she's saying black women are inferior mothers right because they don't understand when they say that white men are the saviors they're saying that white women are such excellent mothers they, they did such a great job in raising and instilling cultural values in their children that they created a superior man what they're saying is indirectly black women create inferior children they're saying black women don't have what it takes to raise adequate children that can go out and contribute to society now i don't believe that but that is what the divestors are saying the divestors are saying that white women are better than black women when it comes to being mothers when it comes to being wives when it comes to raising children that's what they're saying indirectly they they, they secretly worship white women even though even though they hate white women and they're jealous of white women and they wish they were white women because remember what she said remember what rebecca lynn pope said during the discussion because she said she got a black man that pays her bills that handles everything and she was like wow this must be what white women feel like they really think white women are like living like queens and uh, sitting on top of the mountain the average white woman is a regular person making fifty thousand dollars a year regular person man driving a 2004 honda accord man something we also didn't discuss because like i told y'all before my family is in the pharmaceutical industry something we didn't discuss how come how come they never talk about the amount of women in general but black women especially who suffer from mental illness the amount of black women who are bipolar the amount of black women who are depressed the amount of black women who suffer from schizophrenia the amount of black women who have been bakers acted these divestor arguments are stupid because they come from a position where they are perfect we out here killing the game we're millionaires we out here so educated but the real reality on the ground is black women are going through the same thing black men are going through y'all out here getting arrested y'all out here in the streets y'all out here with felonies on your record y'all out here bro come on man y'all out here mentally ill on a crazy level there's a lot of mentally ill black women out here on the streets and especially the ones that are homeless a lot of black women on the streets are straight mentally ill bro like there's a lot of homeless black women on the streets that are straight up mentally ill we got to keep it real in these discussions like i said i'd be outside i really be outside interacting with the people so i really see what's going on man there's a lot of black women on drugs a lot of black women on drugs walking the streets what i'm saying is this picture that they paint where the black woman is up in the sky killing the game and the black man is on the bottom struggling and, and scraping it's not reality it's not reality like shay Charday said the black man and black women they are raised in the same household under the same cultural values so it's not a situation where one half of the community is out here killing the game killing the economy and the other half of the community that was raised under the same roof under the same values with the same core with the same core structure is somehow on a different level no they're going through the same shit they're going through the same shit bro they're going through the same shit and like shay Charday said they need to stop trying to create all these false narratives that can be easily debunked and just come out and say listen i'm just a black woman who's just i just love white people like the black women who are divestors they need to just come out and say look i just love white people but they can't say that because it sounds so crazy to be a black person who loves white people but just come out and say listen i'm black but i just love white people okay just say that just be a man and say that just like this black this black man who say that that's black men who just keep it real like some black men just keep it real and just say look i just love white women man ain't no ain't no anthropological reason ain't no historical reason i just love becky so the divestors need to come out and say the same thing listen i just love white men yes white men have have destroyed my civilizations and yes they've colonized and pillaged and, and robbed and disgraced my ancestors but i don't care i just love white folks divestors just say that man just say listen i don't care what happened to my ancestors i don't care what the white man did i don't care what the white man i don't care about the atrocities that happened i just love white people just say that man start the yo the divestors need to start a new movement i love white people i love white people i love white men i love white women just say that 
just say that stop this stop this fake animosity that y'all got towards white people y'all love white men and y'all love white women because white women they created white men they raised white men they instilled the values that you love about white men so y'all need to go to white women get on your knees to the white women like our president jesus christ like i get on your knees for the white man at church get on your knees towards the nearest white woman and say thank you and when the white woman asks you why are you saying thank you because you gave birth to white men you raised white men thank you thank you for your, your contribution to society thank you for giving us white men that's what the divestment needed to do get on your knees go to becky humble yourself and tell becky thank you thank you for suffering through labor for giving us the white thank you thank you all right man listen shay Sade, i love you salute to you man listen we need more like you you solid you real one anyways it's your boy never that's the link cash app up on the screen and i'm gone peace